Welcome back to the latest video in this little series on the Unit 6 microcontrollers exam. This video we're going to be focusing on looking at the test plan for the little brief that we wrote and we're investigating here. Last video we looked at the specification which is the first part of activity 2. This is the second part of activity 2. And in future we'll be looking at the rest of the activities starting in the next couple of days. So you know what to do if you want to keep up to date with all the updates that we're going to be putting on. First of all, we'll have a quick look at the overview of the test plan and it is a, essentially a set of instructions that you use to check your final program against the brief and it's something that you would quite likely have in industry if you build one of these devices in real life you would want to make sure that whatever you build is going to match what the uh, client wants so that they aren't going to send it back and not pay you. You also need to include what you expect is going to happen when you carry out each of these tests. So you need to give yourself some success criteria. And we'll go on how we'll write them in a moment. I would say, similar to the specification, you're going to need at least eight points. Because you do get marks on how much of the brief that you're covering in your tests and how wide ranging your tests are. You also revisit this when you come to activity five. So we are writing this before we do any programming, before we do any major design. And after we've finished the programming and we've got the device in front of us, we come back to this and we test against this test to make sure that we've met everything that we need to meet. So it's done, It's this is split between two activities, activity two and activity five. So there's actually quite a lot of marks available for this test plan uh, in, in total once we get it completed. Test plan itself is done in a table format. So you can see here a bit of a mock-up of what the table looks like. There's four columns in activity two. There is two more columns added in activity five, and we'll come to that in a later video when we come to looking at activity five's video. The first uh, column is a test number, and that's really simple. All you need to do is put in the number of tests that you're carrying out. One, two, three, and on and on, up to eight, nine, 10, or whatever. You can also put in the purpose of the test, and this is going to be what you're testing for, why you're going to be carrying out this test, what parts of the client brief are you going to be testing when you're carrying out the test. The test condition is less obvious when you read what it is, but what the test condition is, is the thing that you're going to do to test the device. What are you going to do to test this test point? What specifically are you going to press on the device? Are you going to measure or anything like this? And finally, the expected result is exactly what it says on the tin. It is what you think a successful test is going to look like. What do you expect to happen when you carry out this test if it's working as expected? You might also need to do some measurements. So it might not just be looking at the device and checking that all the buttons work and things like that. You might be testing a particular requirement of the device and you might have to measure something with an external tool. But you can kind of deal with that depending on whatever tests you're going to have, feel like you have to carry out. A bit more detail on filling out the entries. The entries, like in the specification, need detail and context. Just saying, I'm going to test a light, I'm going to test the timer, isn't enough. You need to give context. What is that light for? Which light are you testing? How does it affect the project as a whole? If you're going to test a timer, what's the timer doing? What should it time to? What would you expect to happen? And all these things as well. You need to make sure you're covering all aspects of the design. That's why I said that you need to do at least eight, but not only just doing eight, you need to make sure that you are doing eight different types of tests. You're covering every single thing that you could need to cover. Just having a keypad with 10 buttons on and doing 10 tests, one for each button, isn't gonna really cover all the aspects of the design. The final thing, again, similar to what I've looked at in the past, we need to include unexpected events, and these unexpected events, uh, they let us show that we've thought about these unexpected events, what the user might do to break the device by accident or what external factors could come in and interfere with the device and testing that the mitigations that we've put in aren't going to affect the device negatively and aren't going to affect the user experience in that way. It's a good idea to draw attention to this. So when you do a test for an unexpected event, literally say, unexpected event you could even put that in bold just to draw the examiner's eye to it i think that's really good thing to do because then you're definitely going to get a bit missed 
to write an entry, we'll take it through step by step and we'll look at each individual part of a test plan entry. And we'll be looking at a little bit of detail and kind of giving an example of each one. So for mine, the first one, purpose of the test, I'm going to be testing the timer in the taxi. So testing that the amount on the screen is displayed correctly. So doing that by testing against the timer. So it says when the calculator is running, it times the length of the journey accurately to ensure that the displayed charge is correct. So we're testing to make sure that that displayed charge is correct based on the amount of time that has passed. You can see I've specifically mentioned about what the device is doing. I'm just I'm not just saying the cost on the screen is correct. I'm, I'm giving a little bit more detail and a little bit more context as to what exactly I'm going to be testing. The test condition, what I'm going to do about this, I will start the calculator and compare the displayed charge to the clock built into the computer I use to program the device with for two minutes. So because I'm using some outside equipment, obviously we are allowed to use a computer because we're doing some programming and most computers have a clock built into them. So I'm um, comparing the time on the clock, which is we can assume to be accurate because it's a, you know, a, a professional computer. We can assume that that clock is going to be accurate and we will use that to make sure that the time on the device is accurate. In this case, it's not displayed as a time, it's displayed as a, a cost. And specifically because we're looking at this time and this cost, we look at what we expect to happen, the expected result. And because the fare goes up by 25 pence each 20 seconds, that's what we expect to see. And because I know what it should look like after two minutes, which should be three pounds, we'll make sure that after two minutes, we've got three pounds there. I've chosen two minutes because that seems like a fairly reasonable amount of time to test for. Uh, you could go for saying testing for five minutes and you, after five minutes you check to see what the price is. It's up to you, but I'm just putting some numbers in there that I think is testing over a long enough period of time. And this is kind of the length I would expect to see an entry for, maybe a little bit longer, but nothing too wordy. And you can, like you say, you can see the detail in there. I'm very definitely speaking about this particular device, this calculator for a taxi. And I've got lots of references to how it's actually working. So lots of nice detail in there, lots of nice context. And eight of these will cover, at least eight of these will cover everything they need to cover as long as you spread them out around the device quite nicely. In summary, the test plan is a part of the program and part of the exam where we look at testing our program that we write even before we do any programming. We also write how we're going to carry out the test, so not just what we're testing, how we're going to carry out, and as well, we're looking at what we expect to happen. We need to ensure that we've got detail and spe uh, specifics to the project within the test plan, so we're not just talking about a generic device, we are talking about our device that we are designing for a specific use, and what we expect that specific device to happen. And we also need to make sure we're getting and a good coverage of the device. So I say at least eight points. If you do 10, that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, I think if you're going above 12, you might need to think about dialing it back a little bit, but you need, I would say the biggest thing you should be thinking about is at least eight points included here. And at least one of those eight points should be an unexpected event, which you're going to include. And you're going to make it nice and obvious that you've included that just by putting an unexpected event in there and explaining what you're going to do to test for the unexpected event that you're, you've mentioned in the specification. And if you do all this, you should get some good marks for the activity two between this and the specification video we looked at previously. If you want to go look back at that, feel free. Like I say, there will be videos coming out about activity three, which is the first of the really big mark activities coming through. So lots of things to think about needing to put in for that one. That'll be coming in the next couple of days or so. Let me know what you think of the videos. Give us a comment. You know, is there anything you'd like to see? Is there anything that you think needs a bit more cover? Is there anything you've particularly enjoyed? And Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.